Hello from Dendrite Digital in Anaheim. Makers of the Virtue Data Processor. And Zipbits, a website that shows you how to use JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So in this segment, I'm going to show you the Atari 8-bit boot sequence. Um, these are old computers. They had the 6502 in them, and uh, they were known as 8-bit because the data bus was 8 bits. You know, now uh, they're making computers where the data bus is 64 bits wide. And so uh, I was just going over the, um, you know, the the David Firth uh, way of way of emulating the Atari computer, the Atari 8-bit computer with uh, um, an emulation software, and um, I disassembled, or I I. I took the data out of the files and dropped them into uh, JavaScript uh, using uh, um, just some Unix commands to convert the binary into into hexadecimal and then copy those hexadecimal values into uh, copy those hexadecimal values into um, uh, JavaScript. And uh, so I have this little JavaScript 6502 simulator and the Atari ROM and the Atari BASIC all uh, copied out of the out of the binary uh, ROM cartridges, binary ROM images and uh, brought them into JavaScript. So um, I'm just going to step through this initialization procedure. See, it's, it's already uh, looking at the cartridge address. And uh, you can see it, it, it didn't change. The, with the, the black and the red right here means it attempted a write to a ROM. And it didn't change. And then it tests it. Load it, load it with the address and then plus and then decrement and it didn't happen load y with zero stored at five load a with 16 you know that's hexadecimal with the dollar sign in front of it right here so this is load the accumulator with the value 16 stored in six so it appeared up here this is byte six, page zero. Shows right here. It wrote a, uh, a hexadecimal ten to byte zero on page zero, byte six on page zero, and here it is here. And then uh, forms an exclusive OR, and then stores that at uh, looks like. Uh, Yeah, that's that's uh, exclusive or yeah, strange. I don't know what's going on, but uh, procedure works. So uh, now it looks like uh, it's about ready to. Yeah, okay. So it's testing, testing to see if uh, each of uh, 4,096 pages, each 4,096 bytes, it's uh, checking to see if the RAM actually works. And then uh, it's going to go through and uh, initialize stuff. So let me start it running. Oh, uh, it's uh, so right here at A000, it tried to do a write and it failed. So then it took that A0, the high byte, 
on the address and it stuck it over here in what looks like um stuck the uh, the a0 up here and the and uh, so it's got some sort of jump address over here in page 1 which is the stack so uh let's let's go further so it's initializing the graphics hardware that's you know the hardware addresses are d0 through d4 d0 d4 and d2 and uh when it gets to ff it's going to switch over to initializing the ram okay that's seven eight nine a b c <laughs> getting closer d e <laughs> one more f Okay, so here we go. This test is gonna gonna fail because it is equal. And here we are here. Branch if not equal didn't happen. So uh, it initialized four and five and eight. Now it's going one by one, and it's changing the value from whatever it was to zero so uh, then uh, if we get we just go up one at every time and then if we get to uh, FF it's just gonna go to the next page so we'll see So this is the first segment of a two-part segment, two parts, two segments of part two of Atari 8-bit initialization sequence. So you can see that it's just going up by one, one byte at a time, zeroing it out with this tight little loop, about as efficient as you could make that code and have it go over the whole thing. See it there. Over here, it skipped to the next page. It added one to that, and that that value goes over here. So this is the high byte of the address. This is the low byte of the address, and this is the number it has to get to for this right here before it uh, relinquishes control from from this tight little loop. Uh, you can see just increments the uh, y, y index register. And then all right here, you can see that the Y is used as an offset for the address at, at uh, 0, 04. So that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then the page address, the high byte is 2, the low byte is 0. And so uh, the Y is the, actually the, instead of using the 0 here every time, it's using the Y to change that value by 1 each time. It adds 1 here, it copies it in, it copies the Y, from uh, zero zero, that's a number. That's not an address. Copies y and zero zero, and then uh, 
branches are not equal. Oh, it's compare y. It's not copy. It's compare y to zero. If it's not zero, it jumps back here to this address right here and does another another y increment compare. So uh, let's see if we can get to the place where it jumps to the next page. And we'll step through that. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Here we go. Oops. Oh, there we go. I missed it. <laughs> I missed it. Shoot. But you can see what happened. Uh, it didn't branch because y was equal to zero. This is branch on not equal. So it was equal to zero. It incremented uh, the value at five, which is up here, to three. And then, uh, and then uh, loaded x with five compared five with six. So it compared this three to this a zero and it wasn't equal. So it went back up to F one zero one four zero, which is right here where it does the Y thing again. <laughs> and it does that page after page until you get up to, uh, you know, a zero for that high byte in the, the address. So that's that for this segment. I'm going to show you a segment I recorded earlier when this whole procedure, you know, gets to A zero. And I'll show that to you coming up immediately. So this is my Atari emulator in JavaScript. I'm Almost done with the uh, zero, zeroing all the RAM routine. Uh, started all the way from page zero, byte eight. Cleared it all from there to uh, nine FFF. <laughs> so. Wanted to get this recorded just to be on the safe side in case I miss something. I'm going to see this sequence done right. Before I stub this out to try to find out where it went and uh, I didn't know what was going on, so. Nine F F F almost there. Enough. Ah, hold on. All right. So there's nine FFF down there. And where have we gotten to? It's a step there. Looks like we're writing new data. So. We're doing something different. Hmm. 
Look like we're in the basic cartridge yet. Somewhere A to C. We're putting data in the zero page. using some stack memory top down at the bottom. So what is this? It's not writing anything. I don't know. I think it's waiting for a key press. Yep. So let's stop it here. It's waiting for a key press. Compare. Load the accumulator with D4. What is it? Zero B. Let's go look that up. D40B. D40B. Programmer's card. For some reason, every time I try to rotate this, it doesn't. It doesn't save it that way. I, I save over the top of it and it comes back. So D4, 0B, I think. Vertical line counter. D4, 0B. Vertical line counter. So that looks like we need that calls for a, an external chip, a GTIA or something. D40A. Or no, what was it? D40B. Compare it to 7A. So what is 7A? That's seven. Let's go to the uh, that's it's looking for 7A. Make that decimal. 122, 120, 122, what would that be? Vertical line counter, 122. Huh, how do we fix that? <laughs> haven't got my tool figured out. I haven't got all my tools figured out, so I can't adjust the parameters or memory or anything. I can just look at it. Shoot. Be nice if I could just change things. Well, I could just change the register values and the memory values. So I guess I'll stub that initialization procedure out and then get my version of the GTIA in 
JavaScript. Hmm. B four zero B vertical line count. Hmm. It was a waste of time waiting for all that. So, going to have to go through the uh, software and figure it all out. 